All right, guys, today I just want to take a quick in-depth look uh, at the subcoin, which is taken on the high side gauge, and the superheat reading that's taken on the vapor side gauge, okay? Now, there actually is pressure temperature charts built into your gauge set, okay? The outside ring is pressure, right? Outside ring is pressure. This is the low side. This is the high side, all right? If you follow that in, the color of the refrigerant, um, if you track it to the color of the refrigerant, which is green in this instance for R22, there's a saturated temperature ring that you can just follow right over, okay? So if we were at, say, 50 PSI right here, and uh, we went over to the uh, R22, we would come over to about 26 degrees saturated temperature for R22 at that given pressure. If this was 410A at 50 PSI, the temperature would actually be pretty darn low. It would actually be about 2 degrees, okay, for 410A. Naturally, 410A is at a higher pressure, even at saturated state, okay? So um, let's just say it's, let's go the opposite way. Instead of looking at the pressure ring, let's take the temperature of the room. If the temperature of the room is 70 degrees for 410A, which is pink or light rose, okay? then the 70 degrees for 410A would line up with about 200 PSIG, okay? If we took 70 degrees inside, inside the room where we were at uh, with R22, we would look right here where the 70 degrees is on the green, okay? We would follow that out to the temperature, or I'm sorry, the pressure ring on the outside from saturation ring green to the outside pressure ring you're going to find it's about 123, 124 PSIG, okay, for R22 at a given temperature of 70 degrees. Okay, so this is the saturated temperature for any given pressure, all right? The orange one on the inside, that's R404A, okay? Um, you can get different types of gauge sets that have, say, R22 and 134A, or, you know, anytime you use 134A, you want to definitely use your own gauge set. But, I mean, it's best practice to use your a gauge set for each different refrigerant, um, if at all possible. All right, so getting back to our main topic, saturated is actually a refrigerant state where liquid and gas remain at the same time, all right? Uh, so that happens in the middle of the evaporator coil, in the middle of the condenser, all right, while the system's running, uh, the condenser coil. So the middle of the evaporator coil, the middle of the condenser coil, roughly right around in there, you're going to have a saturated state. All right, when the system's off, well, the whole system, the refrigerant um, almost acts like a whole refrigerant bottle as a, in a saturated state, all right? The things that separate the pressures in, uh, in the system that's on are the compressor and the metering device. So superheat. We're looking for a temperature increase in vapor form for superheat. So you're going to attach your, your gauge uh, via your hose to the service line, all right, right at the outdoor unit. Okay, you're going to attach it there. All right, if you read, say, uh, let's just use 75, for instance, 75 PSIG, that will correlate to a saturated temperature on the middle of the evaporator coil at about 45 degrees for R22, all right? If you get um, coming at the outdoor unit an actual temperature on the line right near where you attach your hose at of, say, 60, 60 degrees, okay? Then at 75 PSIG, where, and you travel it into the saturated temperature of 45, you take 60 minus 45, and that's 15 degrees of superheat. So you have a temperature increase from where it leaves, from, from in the middle of the evaporator coil, where it's saturated state, to where it comes out at the service port. You're going to have a 15 degree uh, superheat, if that were the case. Okay, So that's how you do superheat, how to find uh, your actual superheat of the system that's running. If you were to look at the uh, liquid line over here, let's just use the instance of 175 PSIG for R22. So that's 175 right there. You follow that into about 92 degrees uh, for your R22. Okay. Now, that's at the saturated state in the middle of the condenser coil. 
by the time it comes out of the condenser coil, it's, it's cooled down, it's sub-cooled. The temperature decrease in liquid form. So if you actually have on your outdoor um, condenser right next to the service valve on the liquid line, a temperature of 80 degrees for R22, then that means you have a 12 degree subcooling, right? Nine, so you have 175 PSIG on the outer ring, what you have for pressure. Follow that into the saturated temperature in the middle of your condenser coil at 92 degrees. By the time it comes out uh, where the service valve is, it's subcooled down to 80 degrees. So that would be a 12 degree subcooling, the temperature decrease in liquid form. Okay. Well, I hope this helped you out, and uh, check us out next time at AC Service Tech Channel.